Welcome to the Garage Engineer. Today at the workshop, we are going to work on saving our garden trailer. Now this garden trailer was made based off plans off of a 1950s popular science or uh, one of those magazines. I have to see if I can find the original article on building this. It's very basic. It's made out of wood and uh, two wheelbarrow tires. It's, it's been neglected, I can say that. You can see the rotted out floor and the rotted out back. And that's just basically because I've left it out in the rain. And I mean, it wasn't meant to be something that's going to be permanent to last forever. But I need a trailer for this spring because we've got some gardening going on and some yard work. And I wanted to fix it up so that it's usable again. The tire, surprisingly, has lasted very well for uh, sitting out in the rain and just sitting there so we'll check those out and we'll have to flip it over and check out the base frame of the project itself so you can see that wood is not supposed to be there you're not supposed to be able to see sunlight and then I, I used an old street sign post as the main tongue which let me tell you you think that would be easy to cut. That was a pain. Well, the cutting was the easy part. Drilling a hole. Either I didn't have the right bit at the time, or that steel is just very hard. And uh, it took forever. I think I went through a couple bits just to get the hole cut for it. And the cool thing about this is, I don't know if it still works, it is a dump trailer, too, with a latch. The dump part of it can dump it back. So we need to get it fixed a little bit. It's all cattywampus. It should be a little higher. And this back door also opens up. We'll get this unhooked. And this back door should uh, swing open. So we'll, we'll get it taken care of. And we'll get it back into operating order. So let's get started. What I think we're going to do is we're going to clean some of this out. And let's get the sides off of it. I think they're screwed in. Well, that side's rotted out. But the other side here is the sides are screwed in to the frame and then we can kind of see what we've got going on with the frame. It's almost disconnected from the bed, but there's one little part right here. The latch is connected both to the base and to the frame. I don't know if you can see right here where the clasp connects connects to the frame and to the underside of the the bed. So we got to disconnect that, and that should separate us. The frame of this is made of a a sled made out of a four by six right here, cut in an angle, and that's has two runners that go um, on the the full length of the trailer and then I don't think we have any cross members in here we do have some on top but I think I put that there uh, because uh, after it rotted I was trying to just temporarily secure it I don't think it had any originally so it was just these two and everything was made with um, uh, let me say the 4x4s four were probably pressure treated but everything else was made with just regular construction material because the material right now is high because of the COVID and the building industry we're going to see what we can find around here and just kind of put this back together with what uh, scrap material we've got I wanted to show you on here this gives you a better idea of the uh, runner right here or the skid I guess and then you have the runner on top of that and then this is a fixed axle, just one bar going all the way across with the uh, bearing in the wheel itself. So we'll need to check that too. And here's the other runner. Uh, it looks like this was probably sitting at an angle and the water was collecting down on that corner and that's why that side rotted out. And this was exposed to the same amount of water and uh, it didn't rot out too bad. It's just where the water collected and leaves and all that. So maybe we'll do a better job, make sure water doesn't collect on it and it'll last longer. And then maybe we'll even paint give a little bit of protection from the elements but not much but some's better than nothing so we can get a better look uh, underneath here I use this is a signpost that I found with some uh, angle iron or not uh, bar stop that we welded 
and that's how we made the frame and then we welded the fixed stock, uh, axle to it um, and we use lag bolts here to hold the the 4x4 four four, or 4x6 I should say and then we just screwed from underneath here to hold the base and that's what we're going to do right now is take the uh, the base of the platform off and see what we can do to get something else to replace it. So I got all the screws I can see underneath here but probably I bet there's a couple of screws here but it's blocked by the uh, skid and I don't feel like taking out this lug part. I want to keep all this the subframe section together so what I'm going to do is probably just cut out cut the uh, the screws wherever they are at. Uh The frame of the bed is 48 by 30 inches and I've got a piece that I found of OSB that it's 48 by 32 so we'll cut that down. So to add some lateral support to the side rails we're going to put some cross beams across, uh, between the two and we're going to attach those using Craig pocket hole jit. So we got the bed all secure and it's pretty strong, I'm pretty happy with that. So now we got to move on to the side rails. Now I've been looking for some uh, scrap material to replace the side that's rotted. Can't find any. So what we're going to do is half of the bed is still good over there. And we're going to cut that and use that for the long side. But definitely we're going to replace the side piece right here and we won't worry about that corner right there on the front but the rest of this this is going to go so i'm going to go ahead and just off camera cut the piece out and then we'll screw it together well i decided to keep the door on uh, maybe we can reinforce the hinge area. Most of the door looks all right. Uh, we can maybe reinforce it with some wood or something like that. So that's why I decided to keep it on. But right here you see where we're attaching the sides to the frame of the trailer. So I think we've got it put together really well. I did went, I went ahead and took the door off the back. But I think at the next step is we're going to paint it. Uh, most of this material is not weather rated, so painting it will help a little bit. It won't be perfect, but at least it'll keep some of the water off of it so that it doesn't rot as quickly. Another reason why I want to paint this, not for weather protection, but also gets, uh, helps me get rid of all these half cans of paint that I've used from different projects. They just sit around, so in the, and they get old after a while. Let's speed this process up a little bit faster. I think I found a new way uh, to paint. I love that pouring and spreading. That uh, works pretty well. So all I've got left is this side right here. I think I'm going to take the wheel off, paint it, and we will be done. Alright, while we're letting the trailer dry, we are going to uh, check out the tire that was flat. One tire was good, the other tire was dead flat. I don't know if it's dry rot or uh, if it just needs to be filled up, so let's take a look. It is 4.8 by 4 inch, I guess, by 8 inch diameter. So let's, it's got an inner tube in here. It's definitely got cracks and we're not taking it on the road it's just going to be used on the farm so we'll use it until it actually pops and dies 
But now let's find out if it's actually leaking or not. Okay, it's holding air. That's 5 PSI. Let's give it a lot more. 21, so that's pretty good. Seems like it's holding. Now I just got soapy water here in the spray bottle. And we're just checking for leaks. So we'll know if there's leaks if we get any bubbles. So nothing around the rim. That's good. Let's check the other side. I hadn't used it in probably about two years now. And I've been needing it. So I'm glad I'm getting this put together. I think we're good to go.